why do you think Colombia is leading the way in Latin America? Why do you think we are ahead of the curve from other countries in our region? Well, the honest truth is I don't know, but I can tell you what I see. Yeah. Uh, when, I, when I go around the different countries in Latin America, this is definitely a more liberal country. I don't know if it was because we are such a melting pot in many ways. Um, we do have many problems in, in, in equality, in, in ethnicities and social background and income, but still we are a lot of, we are a melting pot. And when we, I mean, in government, the participation of women is very high, very powerful women. I mean, if you go to a ministry, you are usually going to find that there's in that, what we call that technocracy, in that technical level, lots of women, very powerful women. And that also means that when the private sector sits down with government, which is yeah. in many, many different uh, situations, you're going to find a powerful women to interact with. That, cha that already starts changing yeah. your brain. I don't know what, why that openness is, I, but I'm very aware of it. I mean, when I go to Mexico, Argentina, Chile, yeah. uh, Brazil, it's very different. I mean, the, and, and I'm very, I, I see the looks in their faces. I mean, like, like if I'm taking some liberties that are not, they're not used to. Yeah. Uh, but I don't know the, the real reason why. The only thing I know is that we need to foster it. I was in one diversity uh, uh, discussion with, I don't know, some private bank. And someone from the United States was giving us a conference about her own experience. And she was telling how she was going to just to be moved from one city to another. And she was very concerned about her children, who had to be at least for two years or three years. And somebody gave her the advice of, of, of involving that into the job discussion, not her personal life discussion. I disapproved of that strategy 100%. Yeah. But particularly my audience was like enraged. All these exec top executive women in Colombia were like, no, what? No way. We're going to know. And I think I thought, and this, is, this person came from the, from the United States market, let's say, yeah. corporate world. And, and my colleagues were and like, there's an attitude. I mean, we're very feisty about yeah. what goes and what doesn't. And I think whatever it comes from, we just need to foster that. And we need to export that to the rest of Latin America because we are not going to be a national reality. This needs to be a regional reality because, amongst other things, because talent needs to move around. And, and that's going to be probably the next generation's discussion. Talent has to be much more mobile. It's going to be a critical discussion for, corp for the corporate world. And in that sense, we need to be able to be as happy and free as we would be in Colombia and some other places in the region. And talking about, you know, um, more now the private sector and companies, um, for the first time, Colombia joined that group of countries where the major companies have at least one woman on the board of directors. And um, what do you think is driving that? Uh, I think that there are many things that are behind that force. One is, is, is peer pressure, I mean, and market pressure. Mm -hmm. I think that everybody's feeling that, in general, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just say that ESG values are starting to push their way in companies and in their, in their feeling of what should matter. And, and so every time now that they're going to name a board of, of, of directors members, they start thinking, am I diverse enough? Yeah. Um, and it's good. It's not the place we should be, yeah. uh, but, but it's a start. But it's an op only an opportunity. I mean, we can tr truly uh, seize that opportunity and find inclusion, which is not that you're actually sitting in the board, but that you're actually yeah. listened to and valued in the same way that your colleagues. Um, and we still have some, some, uh, some path to go on that, on that matter. What can we do to foster that inclusion? One major responsibility is on the shoulders of, it sounds a bit um, arrogant, but sort of as pioneers. I mean, mm -hmm. those women who are sitting on boards have a huge responsibility. We have to work harder. Because once you're sitting there, you're earning your colleagues' respect 
as the different one. And that's not, and, and I want to be very eloquent about this. I have not met any man that sits in the room and thinks, I'm going to be entitled, I'm going to be, uh, uh, I'm going to discriminate, I'm not going to respect my colleagues' opinion. That's not how it works. But you have, or we all have lots of unconscious biases. Yeah. And I am keen, I mean, I'm keener to agree to people who are like me. Yeah, and that's not, like again, me. yes, and that's not only gender. Yeah. That's cool. Uh, that's uh, your soccer team in Colombia, which is an, an important dimension. That's your background, that's your age. Um, and in that sense, I think that part of the job that we have is to start, we are gonna be tested much harder to show our value. And that may not be fair, but that's the way it is. So we need to be very clear that we are carrying that responsibility into the board meeting. I think that the other responsibility we have is to speak about these things, but speak without the, aggress the aggression or the idea of reivindication. Again, I don't think that my male colleagues have a particularly, yeah. you know, mean intention you. in their view, but they come from many, many years of being educated without diversity at the center of what they were looking for. And I'm just going to give a third idea. Every time I'm called in to talk about diversity, I'm usually not called in to talk about diversity. And I'm usually not called in to talk about gender. I'm usually called in to talk about women. And this is not about women. And this is also about men. And there are an infinite number of rights that they have been also denied in the stereotyping or gender stereotypation of society. I think that giving them back the ability to see that they have also been paying costs for these kind of stereotypes is part of the path of making every one of us realize that maybe that's not my role. That's just a role that has been imposed yeah. on me. Yeah. And those are three ideas.